the ability to construct a portfolio somebody can live with, right? Um, let's go back to last February, March, S&P 500, basically from February 19th to March 23rd, sells off 35% in a month, more or less. Yep. You know, and, and the, the interesting thing, and I've, I've stolen this from a colleague of mine, in our day-to-day -day lives, when things go on sale, right? So we go to the supermarket, it's buy one, get one free. Well, now I'm going to buy four when I was just going to buy one, right? And, and and we do that in shopping, cars, houses. What's interesting to us psychologically is when the market sells off 30, 40%, arguably things are on sale, yet we as investors want to run for the hills and go to cash versus maybe leaning into that, uh, you know, obviously trying to take a, a longer term perspective. I thought that really resonated with me that you're, you're, you're you know, one of the themes I took away was, and you alluded to it with your own personal money, you're building a portfolio you can sleep at night with and, and live with, right? And, 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 and kind of live through these unexpected risks that will inevitably arise. Yeah, and, and, that, and that is different for everyone. It's gonna be different right. for me than it is for you. Even if you and I are the same intelligence, same information, roughly the same age, it's gonna be, be different for everyone. That I think is an important point, is that a lot of finance tends to be viewed like it's math, like two plus two equals four for everybody. There's one right answer for everybody. That's how math works. But investing portfolio management is not like that. Everyone's gonna to come to a different, a different level of how much risk they can take, how much risk they wanna take, need to take, is different for everyone. And just being a little more introspective about yourself, about your own personality, your own faults, your own goals, and coming up with a portfolio that even if it's not perfect on paper, and even if the financial formulas, the economic textbooks say, at your age, you should be taking more risk or less risk, et cetera. If it works for you and your, and your unique personality, then great. The purpose of money is to give yourself a better life. It's not to make the spreadsheets happy. It's not to <laughs> follow the rules of a guy who won the Nobel Prize in economics. It's to give you a better life. And just finding a portfolio that works, that achieves that versus achieves the right risk reward trade off, you know, getting really technical about it. Just whatever, whatever makes you happy, whatever helps you sleep at night, that's the right portfolio for you. Yeah. And, and you, you, and kind of in closing here, you, you, highlight Benjamin Graham throughout the book a couple times, obviously very um, influential in just investing and things like that. It reminded me of a quote that he has that basically he's saying, look, the best way to measure your success is not whether or not you're beating the markets. It's whether or not you've put a financial plan in place that lets you control your emotions and, and, and put in a disciplined approach to kind of get where you want to. Ultimately, that was my really big takeaway from the psychology of money that, you know, and you, you reference it in the book is basically the ability to do what you want, when you want, for as long as you want. That is really kind of when we work with clients, we call that you're financially independent. So whether or not you want to go to work next Wednesday, you're, you're working because you want to work now. The, the money right. side of it is, is taken care of. That to me is so psychologically freeing just, you know, most of our clients continue to work because they enjoy what they're doing. But just the simple fact that they know they don't have to go to work anymore if they didn't want to, that really kind of frees them up. Is that, would you kind of agree with the big picture from the book that, and you kind of hit on it, that really is a big concept of the book and of, of, of the psychology of money for, for individuals. I think that's it. It's the it's controlling your time. It's just having control over your right. schedule. And controlling your time does not mean that you're necessarily retired. It doesn't mean you're sitting on the couch doing nothing. Right. You can control your time and still make the decision that every day you wanna wake up and go to work and do your best work. But if, it's, if the decision is yours, if you're in control over it, if you have that level of independence and autonomy, that is, I think, the highest dividend that money can pay. And using your wealth to gain control over your time versus just the constant pursuit of more stuff that I think is an overlooked way to use money to gain a lot of lifetime happiness. It tends to go overlooked when we're talking about money and wealth. Well, Morgan, we appreciate you giving us uh, a little bit of your time this morning. We've, we're a big fan of the book. Like I said, we're going to be sharing this with clients and, and really kind of following through and really just trying to use it as an educational piece with our clients to say, you know, some of the stuff that we're constantly talking about, it's really kind of short term. So, Congrats again on the book and thank you again. Thanks so much for having me. All right, take care. Thank you.